of Luke chapter 5. Going to be reading over there, verse 17 through 20. The title of the message today is he saw their faith. He saw their faith. Does he see your faith this morning? I've often said faith is the currency of heaven. You won't get anything from heaven until God sees faith. Jesus walked this land, I'm telling you, 30-some years. He, he walked this land, and he would not do a miracle until he got some faith. Until he saw their faith, he would never do a miracle. I tell you, he lived among the people in Nazareth. He was raised in, in Nazareth, and there in his own city, among his own kin people, he couldn't do many, many things because of their unbelief. So he had to have faith before he could work. I mean, a miracle worker, uh, uh, the one who can turn the water into wine, that can raise the dead, was right among them. But they never received much from him because they didn't believe. Somebody say, you got to have faith. He saw their faith. Over in the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 17, and it came to pass a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Now notice this, and the power of the Lord. Think about that. The power of the Lord was what? It was present to do what? To heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with the palsy, and they saw means to bring him in to lay him before him. And where they could not find by the way that they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and they let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst of Je before Jesus. And when he saw, here's the title of the message, when he saw their faith, he said unto the man, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. I pointed out uh, in another message a couple weeks ago what this verse here in verse 17 says, that the power of the Lord was present to heal. Amen. In more scriptures than one, that, that scripture will pop up. That the power of the Lord was present to heal. Let me say this, in the beginning when, when uh, God said, let there be light, before he spoke light into existence, before he parted the waters and done the recreation and all, uh, listen, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord was brooding upon the waters. I mean, before God released his faith to uh, put things back in order, to bring light out of darkness, before he done any of his creative work, Oh, hear me. The power of God was already circulating. It's already, it's already moving. Let me tell you something. The power of God is circulating in here this morning. Before I even started preaching this message, I'm telling you the presence of the Lord is in this house. Can somebody, can somebody lift your hands and thank God the presence of the Lord is in this house? Thank God, as I pointed out in that message the other day, uh, that the Spirit of the Lord was present to, to do all the creative work that God did. But the Spirit of the Lord did nothing until God released faith, until God said something. Amen. The creative power was present, but it would not do anything until God gave the command. Amen. Even though... The power of God was present here when this man was laying on his bed. Nothing happened. Somebody lift your hand. Nothing, nothing happened. I don't care how the power of God's moving. Don't care how the anointing's moving. Don't care what preachers that preach. The, nothing will happen until somebody releases their faith on the word of God. Amen. Jesus saw their faith. Amen, let me say this. All the power of God can be available. All the power in the world could be available. Amen, all the power of God can be ready. The power, um, amen, let me, let, let me say it like this. The power in the world, all the power in the world could be present. But listen, 
it, it won't do anything until God sees our faith. Amen. The same power that was present in the creation of the universe, amen, could be present. Amen. The power to raise the dead. How many knows the Holy Ghost raised the dead? Amen. The resurrection power that Jesus was brought out of the grave from could be in a service, could be moving in a mighty way. But even though it's present, even though it's ready to do something, it can't do anything until it's activated. Somebody say it's got to be activated. Miracles has got to be activated. How do you activate them? You activate them by faith. Faith is the... the Igniter, igniter. Somebody say it's the igniter. Somebody shout it's the igniter. Let me tell you, thank God, it's just like the wick that's in a piece of dynamite. Hey, man, it's the igniter. Let me tell you something. You've got to have faith. Faith without, faith without works is dead being alone. Faith can't do anything by itself. It has to be activated. Let me tell you, it's just like pulling the main breaker. This church has got a main breaker out there. If you go out and you hit the main on this thing, you cut all the power off in this building, everything's going to go dark. Everything's going to go out. The speakers are going off. Can I tell you, it's just like pulling a breaker. Amen. Thank God on a breaker box, all the... Let me say it like all the power that's coming from new power out through these transformers and all. Amen. They're held back. All that power could be shut down out there on that pole. Amen. But let me tell you, it, when the handle's pulled, when the handle is pulled, thank God, when, when all the power of God could be present in here, but it's held back until you pull the switch until you pull the breaker. Amen. Until you use your faith. Somebody use your faith right now. Thank God. Hallelujah. God said, let there be light. And there was light because he believed it. He spoke those things that were not as though they were, and they become what he said they would be. Somebody lift up your hand. I don't care if you're sick in your body. You ought to be claiming you're healing today as the word goes out. There's a power in here. It's present right now. Amen. Sometimes we sit in here, we can feel them goosebumps, ghost bumps, Holy Ghost bumps running up and down the glory avenues of our soul. And I'll tell you something, even though we're feeling the presence of God, until we release our faith on it and say, this anointing is going to heal my body. This, this anointing is going to touch my finances. This anointing is going to, oh, come on, somebody. Release your faith on that anointing today. Hallelujah. The presence of God was there to heal Amen, let me tell you, Jesus can't do anything without you activate your faith. The Bible says in verse 20 of that scripture we read while ago in Luke 5. Amen. And when he saw their faith, he said unto the man, thy sins are forgiven thee. It wasn't until he saw the faith of those people and that man's faith that the power of God was released on that crippled man. Whew, somebody praise God. But as soon as he saw their faith, he said, Arise and take up your bed and walk. And immediately the Bible says he arose before them. How do you see their faith when faith is invisible? I can't see your faith. You can't see my faith. Amen. I can't look inside your heart and see how where your faith level is. You can't look in mine. Amen. You can hear what I'm saying, thank God, and sort of tell, amen, where my faith level's at today. But let me tell you something. I, you can't actually look in there and see where my faith really is. You don't know the level, and I don't know the level of yours. So how did Jesus know the level of their faith? Because faith is a spirit. He knew their level of faith by their actions by what they did. They did something. And I say they did something. They carried the crippled man to where Jesus was. They climbed up on that roof and tore the roof back. They took ropes and lowered that man down right in front of the master where he was teaching. Amen. Faith is an action. They, they, they put action behind their faith. They put action behind it and they... Amen, their faith had movement. They moved on what they believed. Somebody praise him. I guarantee you, you'll move if you believe that God's gonna do something for you. 
Let me tell you something. Doubt and unbelief does nothing but sit still and wishes things to happen. Amen. You're just wasting time. I wished I had a job. I wish I had this. I wished I had that. Wished I had the other. Faith don't just sit around and wish on a star. Faith gets up and takes action. It jumps up and does something. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Praise God. Hey Amen. I've heard, you know, a lot of preaching, and a lot of times the preachers say, lay your hand on the television. Hey Amen. And people lay there and won't touch the television. Let me tell you, hey Amen. A lot of people have reached out and touched the television and been healed. They, they took a step of faith. Faith acts like it has it. Faith talks like it has it. Even when it don't seem to have it, it, it talks like it has it anyway. Somebody say, by faith, I'm rich. By faith, I'm healed. By faith, I'm blessed. My God, Jesus walked right by many a sick people while he was on this earth, people who were halt, blind, deaf, and dumb. Amen. People could have been healed because we know that Jesus had the power to heal them all. There's places Jesus did go and he healed them all. Amen. That same Jesus among some people couldn't get them healed because of their lack of faith. The power was present on that day. The power was moving. Amen. It was in Jesus. Let me tell you though, even though the power of God was moving, Jesus never did nothing until he saw their faith in action. Can somebody lift up your hand right now and put your faith in action? Say, Lord's gonna, God's gonna do what God says He's gonna do. God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. Can you give Him a praise before it happens? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It takes faith to activate the healing in your body. Doubt will leave you sitting by the wayside begging, but faith will get you back up on your feet. Turn your Bibles over to the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 35. We're going to start reading. The Bible says, And it came to pass as they, as he was coming nigh to Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Amen. This man been by the wayside begging. I don't know how long. Amen. And he is here and the multitudes pass by. Him. And he asked them, What does it mean? They told him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He cried out saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before him rebuked him that he should hold his peace. And boy, here, here, here was a man that wasn't going to shut up. He cried out so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Notice what Jesus did. Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do to, unto thee? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Anybody got a problem today? Like, hey, man, while the presence of God is moving in this house, and I feel it. Does anybody feel it in the house? Oh, it started when, when the song service was going on. The presence of God moving. It's moving now. Jesus said unto him, receive thy sight. Notice what Jesus said. He said, what, what did he say saved him? Faith. Thy faith. Everybody say, thy faith, faith. has saved thee. Can I tell you, Jesus, if you'll use your faith today, it can save you from any situation, anything you're under today. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. God. This man's faith got him, it saved him. Somebody say his faith saved him. Some of you stand back there right now, if you just get a hold of the faith, get a hold of, get, 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 get some faith words in your mouth. Put the word of God in your mouth and say, God, I believe, I believe God can heal you right now. My God, God can instantly do it right now. This blind man's faith cried out at him. It got Jesus' attention. Amen. He didn't sit quietly as the healer passed by. And you shouldn't either. I said you shouldn't either. Amen. As the healer, the miracle worker passes by, don't let him pass you by. Amen. Reach out. 
by faith. Now this man cried out to Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that his faith saved him. They tried to shut him up. They tried to calm him down, but he cried out the more. Amen. He was releasing his faith. And when he did, he activated the power that was present in Jesus, and he was healed. If that man would have just sat there and did nothing, what would he have got? I mean, the healing power was all over Jesus. It was in him. But the man started crying out, and it released the, he released his faith, and the faith that he had released the power of God that was in Jesus, and the man walked away healed. Somebody ought to give God praise right now. Reminds me of the woman with an issue of blood. She didn't just sit idle when she saw the huge crowd surrounding Jesus. She could have said, no, there's too many people, too big a crowd today, I'll wait some other day. But no, she started talking to herself. She started saying within herself, if I can only touch but the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be made whole. That hem of his garment was her point of contact. Somebody praise God. She started pressing her way through. She started pushing her way through that crowd. Amen, she didn't get a lawn chair and sat out there and wait till the crowd cleared out. No, she wasn't just sitting around wishing for a healing. She did something. When the power of God's moving in here, do something. Move that leg, move that, come on that part of the body. My God, hallelujah. I don't know at the times God has healed my body by a little act of faith. Sow a seed or something toward my need. I've seen miracles happen. She had to push her way through to get to him, but when she made her point of contact, when she touched the hem of his garment, her faith activated the power that resided in Jesus, the power that was in Jesus. Amen, and that power came out of him, and when it did, <laughs> She not only felt it, she felt in her body she was healed, but she didn't only feel it, but Jesus felt it. My God, how many like to have a faith that'll touch Jesus this morning? Give me a faith that'll touch the anointing. Give me a faith that'll draw the power out of him. Thank God. Jesus felt the power of God. He called it the virtue. The virtue was the anointing. The virtue was the power of God. The virtue left out of him and went into that woman and he asked, who touched me? The disciples, what do you mean everybody's touching you right now? Everybody's trying to get to you. But Jesus said, hey amen, I'm paraphrasing. I believe he, he was saying, you don't understand somebody's faith. Somebody hit me preach. Somebody's faith. Somebody shout, somebody's faith. And I tell you, I, out of this good crowd this morning, they might just be one of you. Whoo, get you healing today. It could be, come on, somebody. I don't know who you are. I'm preaching somebody can walk out of here healed today. Somebody. Oh, you believe in that old healing stuff? You better believe it, brother. I've been healed more than one time. I got people sitting around me that's been healed of cancer. I got people sitting in here being healed of Bell palsy. I've got people sitting in here kidney diseases has been healed. Somebody lift your hand and pray. My, I, I, I pastor a church where people's knees has been healed. Hey, man, I had a two bulge disc and a pinched nerve and carried it around for a year and a half suffering. Couldn't lay right, couldn't sit right, couldn't stand up right without hurting. I had to go to different chiropractors and none of them could help me and I'll tell you they finally assigned me over to a surgeon and they was talking about doing surgery on me but between oh glory to God between the time I happened to have surgery I got a hold of the hem of his garment and the power of God come down God healed my body it's been years ago I don't have any back problem thank God I do everything with my back that I want to let me tell you he healed my two bulge disc and the pinched nerve Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You say, you mean preachers go through things like that? I thought preachers didn't have problems. Brother Copeland was telling the other day about on his hand something come up, and it happened to be a malignant cancer. 
But you know, he didn't let it eat his body up. He started cursing it and binding it. I rebuke you, devil. Get your roots out of my hand. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And today, Brother Copeland, amen, his hand is healed from malignant cancer. Can somebody lift up your hand? Hey! my God if I had a problem right now if I could get to it without embarrassing myself I'd start rubbing it right now I'd sign heal in the name of Jesus I want to activate that anointing Anybody want to activate it? Somebody activate it right now. Maybe you can't touch the part of the body that you need healed. Amen. But you can get your mind on it. Say, God, in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I receive a healing. Somebody, somebody praise him. Somebody pray. There's an atmosphere in here right now. The virtue's releasing. The anointing's in here. I feel it leaving me right now. It's anointed. This service is anointed. Somebody be healed right now. Somebody come in here with a busting headache. That thing's leaving you right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody's ears are being opened up right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I heard Brother Jesse DePlant is talking about having to have some heart uh, surgeries and stuff where well, the Lord came through and healed him. Oh, I could tell you some stories, people that's sitting in here today whose babies was in the womb, not the it's little legs wasn't growing at all and God reached inside that mom and healed that baby's legs somebody would give God praise you go to a church where they can get a hold of heaven thank God God healed that baby somebody else coming here with the babies and they done the x-rays and all found out the spine was growing outside of its flesh but God put the spine back in somebody lift up your hand between now and the next doctor's appointment you could be healed of anything somebody, if you activate your faith somebody shout I am healed 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 you might be battling something in your body right now I'm telling you even though we're saved sometimes it rains on the just Amen. We're not exempt from the rain. The Bible said it rains on the just and the unjust. Some people, uh, they'll tell you if you're saved, you'll never get sick. You'll never do this. You know, amen. I'm telling you what, it may attack us, but we don't let it stay long. I'm going to buck it off, honey. I'm going to get in the anointing, let the anointing shake it off. Help me preach. There ain't no devil can stay on a Holy Ghost back long. Help me preach in the name of Jesus. How many believes that this morning? Amen, Jesus. Jesus was saying, you don't understand. Somebody's faith is reached out and touch me. In other words, Jesus was saying, I felt the power go out of me. Jesus was saying, somebody just got healed. Ooh, and I feel the anointing coming out of me. I feel like somebody gets healed. Somebody had a financial need. It got healed. Somebody praise God. Hey, man, somebody activates when somebody activates the power of God, amen, their faith is released on Jesus' anointing. Turn your Bibles now over to the book of Luke chapter 8 and verse 48. Then the woman fell at his feet, healed, hallelujah, by the power of God, talking about the scripture up here. At the end of scripture in Luke 8 and 48, Jesus, listen, Jesus said, daughter, whew, daughter, how many knows your sons and daughters of God? Hallelujah. Why would you want one of your daughters to stay sick? He said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith, everybody see that? Somebody praise him. Thy faith hath made thee whole. My God, somebody pray. Your faith hath made thee whole. I speak again the demons of sugar diabetes. I speak again the demons of cancer. I speak again the demons of arthritis, rheumatism, gout. My Lord, ulcers, hernias. Come again, the spirits of doubt, unbelief. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing all over this building. 
I release the, the prosperity anointing right now. Will y'all receive it right now in Jesus' name? I speak blessing over you and not curses. That you would be above only and never beneath. In the name of Jesus, somebody praise him. Somebody reach up like you're going to catch something. Whew. Sometime we, we won't, we'll, we'll claim we're going to catch this, we're going to catch that and the other, talking about flus and this, that, and the other. And I rebuke flus right now. I rebuke this cold of virus. I rebuke that demon in the name of Jesus. I'm, I refuse its stronghold. And I send out an anointing that will you take it. Receive it, and I felt that. I heard some of y'all say, I receive it, and I felt the power of God in somebody. It left that to me for somebody this morning. It ain't too late. You might be over your head in debt, and may look like it's done, it's over. But let me tell you, just like when Lazarus in the grave, he come to those women, they said, if you'd have been here, our brother would not have died. In other words, they're saying a little bit too late for you to show up now, but Jesus said, I am still the resurrection. I'm the life. If a man live, believeth and liveth in me, he shall never die. Believest thou this? They said, yes, Lord, we believe. Yes. Somebody shout, I believe. I believe. That's all Jesus needed to hear. He was, trying to, he was trying to get some faith up in them. Let me tell you, when he got them to believe in it, they went out there at the stone, and then doubt started popping back up. Jesus told them, said, roll that stone away. And here they go. Why, Lord, by now he's stinking. It's been four days. He's stinking by now. Jesus said, did I not tell you if you'd only believe, you'd see the glory of God? How many won't see the glory of God? Whew, somebody won't see the glory of God? If you'll only believe, you'll see the glory of God. They run down there and they move that stone and Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And he comes Wobbling out of there, bound hand and foot, Jesus said, release him. Let him go. I'm telling you, that same, my God, that same Jesus is in here today. That same resurrection power is in here today. If thou canst believe, the miracle's on Jesus. It's the receiving part that's on us. Somebody, somebody, somebody say, I receive. I, somebody say, I believe. Do you believe Jesus is a healing Jesus? If you'll only believe, well, I'll tell you in this last day, we're going to see the glory of God. We're going to see things that's been prophesied. God don't finish up at the end any less than he started with. He always saves the best to last. You think, oh, you think the church was glorious back in Peter's day? Wait till God gets done with this. God ain't going to leave out wounded and bruised and beat up. No, he's coming back after a glorified, Holy Ghost filled, sanctified, a church that's up on her feet, demanding and commanding and speaking those things by faith. The glory of God is about to hit this earth like a bomb. The spirit of this age is it's, it's demonic right now. I tell you, these evil spirits everywhere, this looting and this burning cities, help me preach. It's nothing more. I'm like, uh, who was it? Jensen Franklin, I believe it was. I was hearing this morning, he was talking about, uh, it's the spirit of the Antichrist. He believes, and I believe it too, the Antichrist is probably living right now on this planet, and this thing's getting built up. The evil spirit's getting worse. Lawlessness. Have you ever thought you'd ever live in a world where you hear dumb heads saying, we don't want the police no more? I, I tell you, people don't want protection. Come on. Lawlessness. Do you ever believe you'd see a time when they wouldn't arrest people for breaking into a, a store and looting and taking everything home? No, we're living in that day now. And the stupid politicians, forgive me for that word, they're taking up for it. Come on, they're taking up for it. If we live on this planet another five years, you're gonna see things gonna boggle your mind. 
We're living, there's a spirit that's being released right now. It's nothing more than uh, communism spirit. It's communism. Socialism is communism. They're wanting the government to run your house, the White House. They want the government to run everything. Amen. They're wanting to control us. If it keeps going the way it's going, our First Amendment's going to be taken. Our, our Second Amendment's going to be taken. And you church people better hear what I'm saying. You better get out and vote. You better not fold your hands up, act like nothing's happening. Better get out to those voting polls. You say, I don't vote either way. Well, you've made your vote. Amen. You need to cast your vote and let people know how you stand. Thank God. I'm like Copeland. Your, your vote is your seed. Amen. They're wanting to control the pulpits. They're wanting to control everything. In some of these countries, I got a, a letter the other day from Pan American email. Well, those people over in some of these countries are, are being locked up because of their churches, taking the preachers and putting them in jail for 15 years. 15 years is the sentence if they catch them. And we sit in here and fold our hands up and sleep through service. God forgive us. Those people are being murdered. I mean today, right now today, where we'll be preaching in some of those areas today, Taiwan and places. They're having to hide to have church. How many is thankful for the USA? <laughs> Greatest country on the planet. We have our freedom, we have our rights. But if we don't do something, we don't pray. They're going to be taken away. God help. God help. God help when they arrest people who's trying to defend their own house. Come on. The Bible said they'd be calling evil good and good evil. Well, if we're living there right now. And we better do our parts to pray. Amen. Somebody lift up your hand and praise him. Somebody lift up your hands and I say that I want to read this to you. Amen. It's something I felt like the Lord laid on my heart to start doing in the church. The Lord bless you. Receive this. And the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Yes. Give you peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Karababa. God is about to raise up a generation of wealthy people. The devil hates this. The devil hates this anointing because it's going to be the finances of the church that's going to take care of the hungry in the next few years. It's going to be the finances of the church. It's going to, it's going to rise up and take care of people who can't take care of their self. They're going to run to the church for help. Thus saith the Lord, we're living in a peerless time and you'd better do everything you can. Amen. Receive this anointing and receive it now, saith the Lord. I'm bringing my church out of debt. I'm bringing my people out of debt. I'm going to make them a wealthy people, a healthy people. You're going to shine like the people did in Gosha. The wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred over, transferred over into your hands, saith the Lord. It's coming now, saith God. It's not waiting. It's not tarrying. I'm going to pour my spirit out, and as my spirit is poured out, my wealth, my blessings coming, and you better know how to use it, saith the Lord. Somebody praise him. You're not meant to be a, oh, you're not meant to be a rug. You're a glorious church. You're going to be the owners of businesses. Somebody praise him. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. That's why hell's fighting you. You're going to be an example. Your family's going to look at you and say, where they get their wealth? And, and you're going to say, the, the Lord hath made me rich. Somebody lift up your hand. Some of y'all going to get wealthy. It ain't going to be because of your great knowledge. It's going to be because of the anointing that's on this house. Somebody praise him right now. Hallelujah. Will you receive this anointing? Yeah, hallelujah. I, I'm releasing right now a debt cancellation anointing. Will you receive it? This How many shout, me and my house is coming out of debt? Can somebody raise your hand and say, me and my house is coming out of debt? Somebody say, we're going to pay the house off. We're going to pay the car. Come on, somebody. I speak high. Some of y'all are sitting in the right place. You're highly favored of God. You're not going to owe anybody anything but to love them. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, my, my, my. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. The Lord said, I've already started. I've already brought your pastor out of debt. I've already brought your church out of debt. You're in line now, saith the Lord. Get, hallelujah. You receive it. Well, if you don't receive it, you won't get it. Somebody, somebody ought to jump in on there, jump in front of somebody and say, it's mine. It's mine. Somebody get on your feet and, and move your feet a little bit and say, it's mine. This is mine. It's my turn. <laughs> God says I don't have enough churches right now, amen, to fulfill the prosperity assignment on the earth, so I'm going to double up on yours, saith the Lord. Will you receive it? If you don't want it, take it home with me, Lord. Lord, I'm not up here to, oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody needs to run around this building and shout, I'm coming out. Come on, somebody release your faith. If you feel like God wants you to run, you better run. If he tells you to shout, you better shout. Tells you to clap. Hey, Amen. Somebody ought to be running in this house. God told me to tell you this according to your faith, according to your actions. According, huh? somebody shout according to my actions, be it unto me. Hallelujah. How many activate the word right now? Somebody activate it by shouting and releasing your, my God. Oh, God. Nobody else can activate it for you. Nobody else can activate that faith. Nobody else can do it for you. Nobody, hallelujah, yeah, I do that. Somebody shout, money's coming to me. Preacher, sure I've been in other churches, I ain't never heard that. Well, they ain't deep enough yet. Somebody shout, money's coming to me into my church. Money's coming to me in my house. Money come, my God. Oh, I feel, oh yeah, some of y'all believe it. Believers are receivers, remember that. Somebody shout, I believe, I receive. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Activate your faith. Hallelujah. Sometimes God will tell you to do something that don't make no sense. He told the children of Israel, go and put your feet in the brim of the river and see what will happen. Those, seven, they, those priests took that Ark of the Covenant and went down there and stepped their feet in, and lo and behold, the waters were cut off. They just obeyed an illogical instruction. If God gives you an instruction today, you better obey it. Thank God. You won't regret it in a day or two. Somebody praise God. God's going to rain on your house. God going to rain on your house. Well, there's fame and going on all over this world. God has took care of you. Somebody praise him this morning. I'm prophesying right now. I don't know. Amen. I'll take it for myself. If you don't want it, I, I'll believe God for it. I believe it. I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my Lord, I take it. I take it home with me in Jesus' name. Bring it on, Lord. Somebody, somebody, bye, bye. somebody, somebody with your face mask and all on, turn around and speak to somebody. Amen. Don't take your mask off, leave it on. Amen. Just turn around and say it loud enough. Bless, blessed, you're blessed. Somebody bless, somebody bless your neighbor. Blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. I see it raining some houses right now. Hey, somebody receive that right now. I don't, I'm seeing some houses rain. I, I, I'm seeing some vehicles coming right now. I see, I see some bodies getting healed right now. I, I, I see somebody, somebody giving you an inheritance. Somebody, I receive mine right now. Hallelujah, I receive it right now. Somebody praise him. Somebody, somebody just keep on shouting hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody keep shouting hallelujah. You people are crazy. Well, think what you want to. But being crazy, if that's what I am, brought me out of debt. I'll be crazy the rest of my life if this is being crazy. This ain't being crazy. This is believing God. Hallelujah. Worth what you need. Father, I pray God for worth. Touch somebody. Touch him, Holy God, from the top of his head to the bottoms of his feet. Touch him with your glory. Let your glory. Lord, touch this woman this morning, whatever the needs are, in the name. My Lord, my God, let her feel this power. God.